Joining a wireless network is like an unlimited pass to snoop around for devices that are connected, often uncovering vulnerabilities the owners may not be aware of. Today, we'll show you how to use a smartphone to map a wireless network and even connect to devices like this Raspberry Pi on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Scanning a network is a basic skill for any hacker to master, but it might be confusing initially trying to calculate a network range when you're trying to use Nmap for the first time. Instead, you can get started scanning a network today using an app called Fing. Now, Fing is a network scanner that allows you to get a picture of all the devices around you on a network, regardless of whether they're connected via Ethernet or via Wi-Fi. Now, if you're at a business that has a whole bunch of devices connected to the Wi-Fi, this can allow you access to a lot of things they might not anticipate, including security cameras, Sonos devices, thermostats, and all sorts of other smart devices that the owners may not think is open to just anyone. Now, if there's default passwords or vulnerabilities on these devices, this could represent a serious threat. So it's best to run these uh, sorts of scans against your own access point to make sure that devices connected aren't an easy target for people who connect to your wireless network. Now, to get started, you'll just need to use a smartphone. So, let's begin. Now, the first step to using Thing on your smartphone is to go to the App Store or to the Google Play Store and locate it by searching F-I-N-G. Here, you can see a general description, some updates and screenshots, and as you see, it has a great rating because it's free and an awesome way of getting started with a network scanner. So, once you've installed it, go ahead and tap on Open and you should be dropped into the main window. Now, I've already done a scan, but you won't see anything here yet. So in order to get started, you'll need to connect to a network via your home network or another network you have permission to scan. And once you're connected via your smartphone, go ahead and hit the little arrow at the top here to begin the scan, and it will go ahead and scan every different device on your network and provide a detailed description. Now this is where it matters which operating system you're using because on iOS, uh, because of privacy reasons, they've for whatever reason decided to restrict access to the MAC address. Now, a lot of the information that's displayed here, for example, being able to determine the manufacturer is dependent on being able to see and parse the MAC address. So if you're using an iOS device, you may be seeing substantially less information than is available on a Android device instead. Now, since we're using Android, I wanna go through the different devices we're seeing so we can understand the types of devices you'll see in the wild. Now, first and most important is the router. This is the device that's actually in control of the network. And this is also subject to various vulnerabilities because people frequently don't know that they have default passwords or other problems associated with it. Here you can see an Aris router, which is a very popular type of router. But there's a second one as well, which is a Linksys, again, a router. And this is actually a repeater. Now you'll see this configuration in a lot of different networks, and it means that the network is fairly large and needs a series of repeaters in order to extend the signal. Now these can also be hacked and have the same vulnerabilities as a router does. In fact, it can even be more so because people tend to set them up as an afterthought in order to boost the signal of a router. Once they do so, they will frequently use a default uh, password and login in place, which means that it's easy for anyone to just look that up and log in. Next, we can see uh, a number of devices that serve a function but are not in and of themselves that interesting. Now, this could be a printer, a streaming media device, or other things that doesn't have a web interface but does perform some sort of function on the network. Now, if you find something like a Sonos in a public space, this can get really fun because these actually accept plain HTTP requests and you can do all sorts of things to change the music or stop it or turn up the volume without anyone really knowing. So performing a scan on a network and discovering peripheral devices like printers and other sorts of things is a great way to be able to find out about the environment and what you can do to uh, kind of interact with it. Now, last, we'll find host devices, which are things like people's cell phones and laptops. And this is interesting because it allows us to do things, and in this case, we'll take a look at my smartphone. Um, it allows us to do things like determine whether or not someone has a port open or maybe has some sort of vulnerability running that they're not aware of. Now, you can also start to fingerprint people's devices, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this router in order to learn a little bit more about what we can learn on an individual device level. 
Now, first we can see the IP address on the network, which is important for targeting it if we wanted to do any sort of vulnerability scan. And we can also see the MAC address, which allows us on the wireless network to do something like filter on Wireshark to only get traffic that's going to or from this device. It allows us to easily tag this device so that if we see it on another network later, we'll know it's the same one. Here we can also see it's grabbed the network name of the device, which is much more descriptive and even includes things like the model number. And it includes a list of services that this device provides as well, which is useful if we're trying to do a scan and assess any vulnerabilities. Now, in order to take the next step, we can also take a look at other different networks. And in Fing, you can tap on the network window in order to also see a list of services that are available for scanning the network, pinging, and doing other sorts of things like a trace route. You can tap on the very top and see a list of my networks, which has all the various networks that you've scanned. And if you want to go ahead and tap on, let's say a coffee shop wireless network, you can see that this particular wireless network does not use something called uh, client isolation or otherwise isolating people to their own subnet so they can't see other devices. That means that anybody in this coffee shop can go ahead and not only see other people's devices and attempt to connect to them like their phones and laptops, but also can directly attempt to connect to things like security cameras or other infrastructure that might be seen in an office. Now this is what you might expect to see in a coffee shop, but at a university or another place that maybe has uh, like a network system that's a little different, you might expect to see something a little bit more, let's say like this. So this is the network for uh, Caltech. And as you can see, it actually does allow you to poke around and see a couple other devices on it. Now it's obviously not the entire network, but you might expect to see a series of uh, like workshop computers or other sorts of lab computers in a university setting or academic setting. And you'll notice a difference between maybe a, a, a workplace setup and a home setup and then a school setup just by running a scan and then looking at the kinds of devices you see attached. An office will typically have printers, work computers, and then things that you would expect to only see in an office, whereas a home environment would generally not have a, a really advanced you know, security system that has a whole bunch of cameras and a whole bunch of Dell computers all on the same network. Now you can also go ahead and attempt to connect to ports on devices that you discover, and this is where things get really interesting. So to go back to our scan of the local network, We'll select the second device, which is a repeater, and attempt a scan of it in order to learn more about the services that it offers. Now when performing this port scan, we can see that there's a port 8888 and a port 80 open, and port 80 is one of the two ports that we're particularly interested in. When we tap on it, we can go ahead and open it in a browser, and here we can see that it's the administration page for this particular device. Now, if we supply the password here and it's the correct password, we'll be able to log in and change settings, which is a very common vulnerability for many businesses that offer free Wi-Fi to their patrons. Just by knowing this, it becomes easy to even attempt to log into things like a Sonos or a camera system that allows you to see more about the business than the business might have intended you to be able to see. Next, we'll jump into the iPhone to see what it's like to connect to a Raspberry Pi using SSH on port 22. Now here we can see the iOS version in the App Store. And the one major difference is that we won't be able to see the MAC address of any devices we discover on the network. Now, for some use cases, this is not a big deal, but if we're looking for a particular manufacturer, this can be a problem because that's exactly how Fing is able to parse a manufacturer. So we'll go ahead and run a scan and we can see the difference between uh, doing this on an Android device and doing it on this device is while some of the various devices are coming up with uh, the manufacturer as determined by perhaps the network name, the majority of them are not able to be determined and are simply listed as generic. Now we can see here the Roku has managed to be detected and we've found the Aris router and this is likely because they have information um, in their network name that identifies them but we know here we can see that the Mac address is not available which means that we wouldn't be able to do something like isolate traffic coming from that particular device in uh, Wireshark or something. So if we want to take a look at a device and log into it, we can tap on this last device, which is just listed as generic, but I know that this is a Raspberry Pi we've set up and connected to the network. 
Now we've installed Kali Linux on this Pi and we wanna go ahead and connect to it via SSH. So the information we'll need to do that is the port that's open and then the IP address, which fortunately we have here. So when I do a scan, I can see that port 22 is open. And if I were to tap on this on the Android version, a list of default apps would be presented, but the options that are presented in iOS are not that useful. So instead there's an app I like to use that we will plug this into instead. So with the port of one, uh, 22 on 192.168.0.26, we'll go ahead and go to Shelly and tap here to connect to that IP address on that port. Now it'll ask us for our login, which is root, and then our password, which is tour. And here we can see that we've successfully connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now we can see our message of the day screen, and we know that if I am typing reboot, we will in real life be rebooting the Raspberry Pi, whoops, yep, there we go, that we connected to, thus kicking us out because it is now off. And that is how you can connect to a Raspberry Pi or any other device via SSH that you discover on the network, provided you know the password. However, this is also a security vulnerability because SSH and um, other types of communication like Telnet can be brute forced. So if you have a bad password or a default password, you can expect that if your device is on the network and someone comes around scanning, they'll be able to easily log into it as well. You can find some pretty surprising things connected to a network when using a tool like Thing, but it's important to know that these tools can also be detected. So make sure you have permission to scan the network that you're using, because if you don't, this can quickly, if you have an IT person at work, get you flagged as an insider threat. This is generally seen as a prelude to an attack, so although it's not illegal, it will be seen as suspicious behavior, and it can get you in trouble if someone is monitoring the network. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or comments about the show, be sure to shoot me a message on Twitter. We'll see you next time.